So now the question is, طيب, we learned about all of this. How does the soul exit the body? And is there a difference between the believer and the disbeliever? Yes, there is. And the Prophet وسلم, described as if you can see it, the soul exiting from the body of the believer and the disbeliever. There is a long hadith that the Prophet وسلم, he was sitting once with his companions. This hadith is sahih, he'll find it also in Bukhari and Muslim. And a janaza passed by, and the Prophet وسلم, asked about that person. And then he ran. Rasul walked very fast until he reached a place where there was like just soil. And he fell to his knees, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he began to weep. Rasul began to cry a little bit. And he brought a stick. He brought a stick and he started to poke it into the ground like this and look up into the sky. You know, a person with that kind of reaction it's as though he had just received something new about the state of the people of death. And it had affected him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If he wasn't the messenger of God, Allahu alam what would have happened to him. Allah had given him strength. Because he used to say, if you were to know what I know about the people after they die, you would have laughed very little in your life and cried the majority of, life, of your life. And if I wanted, I would have asked Allah to let you hear what's going on to the people in the grave, for those disbelievers or those who are, whose souls have, have been, who are evil souls. But because you bury your people in there, I fear to tell you because then you'll bury no one in the graves afterwards. And you'll, and you won't, and you'll have a miserable life. It is the mercy of Allah that we forget. And then he said to his companions, تَعَوَّذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ Assalamu Seek refuge in Allah from the punishment of the grave. And they sought refuge. Then he said again, Ta'awwadu billahi min adab al qabr. Seek refuge in Allah from the punishment of the graves. And they all said, Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min adab al qabr. And he said it a third time, Ta'awwadu billahi min adab al qabr. And they said it a third time, A'udhu billahi from the punishment of the grave. Seek refuge in Allah. Then the Prophet sallallahu looked at us and said, and the way that the companions were in front of him, a companion says we were gathered with so much any, uh, serenity on our hearts and quietness and were so close to each other that if a bird came past and dropped a dropping, it will fall on one of us. You know, it won't miss. That's how close we were to each other. And he said, <laughs> He talks about the believing soul now. He starts off with the believing soul. <laughs> the believing person, when he is about to depart from this world, to be detached from the world. And he is almost about to go into the hereafter. Two beautiful angels will come down from the sky. They have got beautiful faces full of light, as if their face is the sun itself. That's how much light they have. They have perfume from paradise. And they have shrouding, a shroud from paradise. And then they wrap him. And they place the perfume in him. And the angel of death is there. And he says to the soul of the believer, Come out, come out to a pleasure from your Lord. Come out, come out to a, to a luxury that you are going to receive from your Lord. Ayatuha ruh al-tayyiba. O beautiful, pure soul. The Prophet sallallahu said, The soul of the believer comes out, or the angel of death takes it out, in this way. Just like water spilling from a jug. Can you imagine water spilling from a jug? How does it spill out? You can see it. It spills out softly, smoothly, purely, beautifully. There are no obstacles in coming out. So it says the soul comes out as smoothly as that. What a description. And the two angels, they don't allow the angel of death to hold it for long at all. For as soon as they can, they take the soul off him and they place it in this beautiful shrouding and perfume from Jannah. And they climb up with it into the heavens. And every angel that it passes by, because there are angels everywhere, on earth, in between the skies, as you're going, at the first level, everywhere. Angels are 
are uncountable. And each time it passes an angel or a group of angels, they say, Man hadhihi ar Whose beautiful soul is this? And the angels who are carrying it will say, Fulan ibn Fulan, so and so, son of so and so. Bi ahsan al asma'il ladhi kanu yusammunahu biha, with the best names that he was ever called with on this earth. And they will welcome it until it reaches the first heavens or the first sky. And it has the first skies of gates. Only Allah knows how these gates are and what their nature is. But there are gates. How much do we know of the universe and the black hole and the stars? Oh, we, we hardly know anything. What's up there? The khalq samawati wal ardi akbar min khalq nas Allah says the creation of the universe and the earth is, is much bigger, bigger and more phenomenal than the creation of the human body. For the angels, there are angels at the gates of the first sky. And they say, who is this soul for, this beautiful son? And they'll call, so they'll call it by its beautiful names. And they ask for the gates to be opened for it. And the gates will be opened. And then it reaches the second. And every time it passes by, by a, a group of angels, they'll say the same thing and welcoming it. What? Imagine that, ya akhwan. You've just now departed from the world and there is a welcoming from a creation made of light. There is no darkness in there. There is no hatred. You are the famous one. You are popular among these enormous creatures, beautiful creatures you've never had eyes laid on. And no one else can see this. And if we hadn't been told by Allah and His Messenger, we wouldn't have known this reality. We only say what Allah and His Messenger tell us. For we believe in what they tell us of the unseen. It says it reaches a point very high. In some hadiths, it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, take this soul so it can see its kingdom and its property in heaven. And then by the time the body is prepared for burial, the soul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders them to return the soul back. This is in the hadith of the Prophet I'm continuing. He says, take it back. From the soil we created the body and to them. And to it we will return them. And from it we will resurrect them once again. Return the soul back to the body. It's going to be questioned in the grave. The bad soul, however, is in contrast to that. Rasul Sallallahu told us, as for the bad soul, the opposite happens. Two angels who look terrible, whose face is darkened and horrible, they come down. And the angel of death stands at the head. And the two angels bring with them ugly smelling smell from hellfire and a, a shroud from hellfire. And the angel of death says, اخرجي ايتها الروح الخبيثة Come out, O oh dirty, stinking soul. Come out to a wrath from your Lord and a displeasure from Him. Well, the hadith says that the soul runs away inside the body. And he rips it out. When he rips it out, Rasul Sallallahu gives an, an example, an image, like a thorny tree inside of wet wool. And you rip it out. Until the veins and everything inside sort of rip away, metaphorically speaking. Or is it really in reality? Only Allah knows how. But the point is, he feels it or she feels it. As though all of the veins and arteries in their body are ripped apart. And I've heard. I've heard and seen myself actually. Just one case. Not as bad as this, but I've heard even worse cases. Uh, people, Yani, from this area actually. I went to a janaza the other, last year. And the brother said, I was at my father's deathbed at the hospital. And next to him were people, non-Muslims, non yeah, well, disbelievers. Allah alam what they have done of deeds, only God knows what bad things they've done. He said they're dying and wallahi brother, I don't know why, but I see them jumping up and down off their bed. As if someone's grabbed them and they're just throwing them up and down like that. I've heard it from many people, yeah, and the nurses say this is normal. They get up and they smash their heads back on. They have to put them on morphine just to calm the body down. As his father, his father died peacefully. We ask Allah subhanahu wa to have mercy on his brother's father. And unto Mawtana and Mawtana Muslim and all of our dead ones. But it's not a simple matter. He says, as soon as the angel of death carries the soul, the two angels grab it. And they 
put it in this shroud from hellfire and this ugly smelling stuff from hellfire and they go up into the heavens as well. They all get the opportunity to go through, brothers and sisters. The believing soul and the disbelieving soul, according to the hadiths, they all get the opportunity to go up. But every time it passes a group of angels, they say, Whoa, what is this thinking soul? And they say, Fulan ibn Fulan, so and so, son of so and so, with the worst names that there was ever called in this world. The worst. And everyone run away from it. It will reach the first sky. And the angels will say, What is this thinking soul? And they will say, So and so, son of so and so, with the worst names. It will be asked to open the doors for it. And they refuse. Allah says this in the Quran actually. This is a great warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's saying those who disbelieved in our ayat, our signs, وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا عَنْهَا And they felt, and, and they had arrogance and vanity over it. They thought they're too good for it. The doors of the skies will not open for them. This is the, in the tafsir, this is what happens. When the soul goes up, the doors of the sky close. They're not allowed in. They are exiled, they are prevented. لَا تُفَتَّحُ لَهُمْ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ The doors of the heavens will not open for them. وَلَا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ And they will never enter paradise. حَتَّى يَلِجَ الْجَمَلْ فِي سَمِّ الْخِيَاطِ Listen to this description that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. He said, they will never enter paradise until the camel, until the camel enters through the hole of a needle, of a needle that you sew with. You know, the needle that you put the, the thread through? He goes, when the camel enters through that hole, they'll enter paradise. This is in the Quran. حَتَّى يَلِجَ الْجَمَلْ فِي سَمِّ الْخِيَاطِ And he never... Is it possible for a camel to enter through that hole of a no. That's what Allah says. Or the angels throw the soul down from the top. They throw it. And because Allah says this in the Quran as well about those who made shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they will be thrown from the sky. And this is in Surah Al-Hajj. It says that they will be thrown from the heavens down onto the earth. Into the body. The body would have been prepared. And... It will enter the grave. 